Hey guys. Hey there. Hello. Let's see. Hello. Hey, hey, Clemens. hey. John, are you there? John Mitchell. Good morning. This is John. Hey, John. All right. I heard Clemens. Yes, uh, yes. Let's see. Uh, Rachel, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Um, yeah, I got you. Uh, Roberto. Uh, Varun. Hey, I'm here. Morning. Good morning. Uh, Vlad, are you there? Twice? Yep, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Roberto. Okay, I don't know Roberto's last name. I don't think we have a Roberto yet on the on the uh, attendee list. But I could be wrong. All right, let's see. Um, ba -ba -ba. Charlie? Yes. All right, thank you. And Chris? Yep. All right. Charlie, this isn't your first time, right? Yeah, no, I was here last week. That's what I thought. Okay, I thought your name sounded familiar. Okay, cool. So Hi, sure. this is Roberto from Adobe. There you go, Adobe. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> no, no problem. Do me a favor. Can you add your last name to the agenda doc so I get sure, it in there? Thank you. I'll put the link in there again in case you missed that. Yeah, let's see. David Baldwin, are you there? Hey, Doug. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Jim Curtis. Hi. Hello. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, I think that's everybody so far. You guys are early. So Clemens, um, you had an action item to update one of your pull requests. It might have been clarity around one of our terms. I can't remember which one offhand. Yeah. But unfortunately, I didn't write down in the notes what the exact change was going to be. Do you actually yeah. remember what that was? You are reading my mind. Oh, God. <laughs> because because I, was, I was just about to say, hey, I'm, I'm supposed to do this thing, but I have no trace of, of what I should change. Uh, okay, I'll have to go back and see if I can remember, look deep and hard because, into the memory. Because I just stared at it in, in uh, the, the, the PR as is, and I could not rem remember what the objection was. And, okay. and I went back, I actually went back into the notes and looked, and uh, yes, it was not noted. And that was... Uh, in the middle as we were preparing for the uh, for the demo. So that kind of got under the, under the wheel. Yeah. Okay. Well, I apologize profoundly. No, I, I, obviously we messed up in taking the meeting minutes. So there you go. All right. Um, let's see. Colin, are you there? Colin Sullivan? Yep, I'm here. Oh, excellent. With, Thank uh, you. Zanady and Nats. All right. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Kathy, you there? Yes, I'm here. All, All right. right. Yeah. Nope. Not Lee. Hey guys. Hey, hey Lee. Hey Doug. All right. Okay, let's see who else. Uh, Sean Smith. Yes. Hello. Hello. Um, but up, uh, Ori, are you there? Ori. All right. What about Stanley? Hi, this is Ori. Sorry, I'm, I was muted. Not a problem. Oh, oh hey, Doug. Okay. is that Stanley? Yep. Just All right, cool. I just tried to sign myself up. <laughs> That's okay. We'll figure this out one way or there. All right. Um, da -da All right. Alberto, are you there? Yes, I am. Thanks. Okay, uh, Arun, are you there? Or do we get you? Know, I don't think we got Arun yet. Arun, are you yes. there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. Bill Fine, are you there? Here. Excellent. 
Is there anybody else I'm missing? I think I might have everybody. Oh, William. Hey there. William, you on mute? All right. What about Eric Erickson? Eric, you there? All right, missing those two folks. And this is Pivotal, Cambridge, Jurgen, and uh, Jacques. All right, thank you. We'll type in our names if you need. Oh, that'd be excellent. Thank you very much. Save me the trouble of misspelling it. <laughs> uh, all right. Boston, are you there? Oh, you just went on mute. Boston, B A H H. B A H. -A. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's us. That's just our Zoom trying to be funny. Oh, that's your Zoom. Okay, <laughs> got it. All right, is there anybody else on the call who is not in the agenda? Do we have yeah, William? Or this is Dan Parker. Uh, Dan, okay. Thank and you. Alter Erickson's here. Who's that last one? Uh, Eric Erickson. Eric, got it. Thank you. Is, and is William? Klaus, got it. Okay. What about William? Are you there yet? Yeah, I'm here. You are there. I knew you were there somewhere. All right. Okay. Um, David Lyle. Yes, this is David. All right. Cool. All right. Anybody else on the call want to get added to the agenda before we begin momentarily? Uh, what about fraud? F A R H A D? Okay, I don't hear them yet. All right, tell you what, why don't we go ahead and get started? Just finishing this up. All right. Um, all right, Varun, you had, I think, added some comment here on your AI. You want to speak up to that one for people who can't see the screen? Yeah, so I had reached out to this first two people who were basically injuring leads on the Lambda team in AWS. One of them basically had moved teams and instead reached out to Tim Wagner and said, like, he'll forward my request to Tim. I haven't heard back from Tim yet. So, yeah, that's where it is. Okay. Now, on the, on the flip side, we have a, a rune on the call from AWS, I believe, right? Yeah. Um, is it just a curiosity, just so you know, for background, um, there were some questions among the working group members about uh, AWS's view of our work going on here since you guys were here for a while and then... Um, took a leave of absence, shall we say. And so I was wondering if there were any kind of comment you'd like to make about your, from your point of view, how the work is going or something along those lines? Yeah, um, so, um, well, I represent um, AWS on the CNCF board. So I do watch all the activities closely um, in case in future, if there are any issues, anything around CNCF, any activity related to that, I'm always available on Slack or you can shoot me a mail at argu at amazon.com. So that's my email ID for Amazon. So feel free to shoot me a mail. Um, now, uh, for this activity, uh, the version that has been announced at this point of time is 0 0.1. Um, so we are uh, following the specification. We have looked at the specification. Um, my biggest question, you know, I mean, Amazon is a very customer obsessed company. Um, and 90 to 95% of our roadmap is driven by customers. So my biggest question at this point of time would be, are there any customers that are asking for cloud events? Right, and to that point, I did add that item to the agenda for our offline discussion. So I wanted to sort of ask the question of the group itself. Does anybody have any customers asking for this that they'd be willing to share with the broader group to help people answer that kind of question of, you know, is someone asking for this? I think the way I'd answer that is is we've we've had uh, several customer oriented uh, members attend this meeting and participate, which seems to imply that they're interested in the work. I think until it's a fully fleshed out specification, it's hard to it's still a chicken and egg uh, situation. Um, this is Rachel from Google. I don't know how much we're allowed to talk about that, but I can take on the action item of finding out what we're allowed to say about customers. Okay. I have pretty much the same comment from Oracle as well. I can um, go back and see what we're allowed to talk about. Yeah. 
Dan. We've been, we've been, so Microsoft, um, we've, we've seen quite a bit of excitement. Um, whether, and, and, you know, harmonization uh, of events is something that will um, certainly uh, reduce complexity in, in applications. Um, so excitement from the customer front on Twitter and in private engagements with certainly with our um, MVP community and our influencer community, which are kind of a leading indicator that we're on the right track. Um, whether that translates into money for AWS is something that you guys need to go and decide yourself. Well, it, it's not really about the money at this point of time. You know, that's not how we look at any product or any project we get involved with. Um, the key thing is, yes, I understand the influencer part, uh, but what I'm still lacking at this point of time is what, which customers, I mean, any service, I mean, as I said, 90 to 95% of our roadmap on what we do is driven by customers. Um, so the reason we launched Lambda is because customers were asking for the longest time that give us some compute capability for storage. You know, yeah. And then now over a time, we have added a bunch of triggers as well. The reason we launched EKS is because customers are asking run Kubernetes for me. So if I were to justify for cloud events within Amazon, the first question that will be asked by the management is, which customers are gonna benefit from this? What are their benefit? What are the missing points at this point of time? You know, um, what, what is the use case that they're trying to solve? You know, is it one cloud vendor to AWS or AWS to another cloud vendor? That's the kind of typical questions that are going to be asked. So we have, we have actually, we have in, in, our, in, our, um, re, in our repo here, we have a presentation by Iron, which is just showing how much dispatch code he needs to write inside of AWS to distinguish between all the events. So just, just to harmonize all the events that you guys are, yourself are, are throwing around in the AWS platform, which have absolutely no standardization whatsoever will be a giant internal benefit for you guys. Yeah, Arun, uh, one of the things that I posted is the example of the difference across the different events within Amazon. And that was taken from actual, you know, uh, Git snippets and, and complaints that people have in the, in the internet on the Amazon sort of, in, sort of variance of, of events structure. Yeah, Arun, can you send that into the chat? I'd like to look at it as well. I think it's important to, the work we're doing is important because when you want to get an event out of AWS, do you use SQS, SNS? Do you have to create a Lambda and get it triggered directly? There's all these options and it does mean that the events can become portable. That's gonna be really useful for customers, whatever platform they're working on. So uh, uh, as a, uh, once again, you know, I understand the influencer part of it that it could be useful for customers. Um, I think I would really need some real customer data that here are three customers that are excited about this and how is it going to benefit to them? Yeah, so uh, I'm a bit I, I am a, okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm a representative of Nordstrom. We are one of your major customers and we do, we are interested in this. We see yeah. uh, my, my involvement is because of our interest in this. I'm at the NAIC and we're also interested in this and we are uh, delaying our um, adoption of Lambda uh, until this is adopted um, so that we can see uh, some of that compatibility issue and be able to move our uh, functions around. So we're looking at currently open source options instead of Lambda. Okay. Uh, Hi, I this is, uh, yeah, keep going. Hey, this is, this is, this is John from SAP. I can't speak for all of SAP, but certainly my part of it, uh, which is Ariba, uh, which is a AWS customer as well, as well as the other cloud vendors. Um, that's part of my involvement here is the, the the portability across the across the clouds and our and our private clouds. So yes, this is uh, this is important to some of our projects. Hi, this is uh, Ori from PureSec. Uh, I wanted to also clarify on the fact that uh, even within AWS, the, 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 the difference between each uh, type of event uh, structure uh, makes it really hard for uh, you know, third parties to, to analyze the events. Sometimes you have to use heuristics to understand where the event came from. Uh, so it's definitely missing some sort of standardization that allows you to 
uh, understand what kind of event it is, what, what's the schema of, uh, of this specific uh, event type and, and so forth. So that, that would make it, uh, I think, much easier for a third party, uh, you know, vendors or entities to, to know and understand what it is that they're looking at and to be able to validate uh, the data properly. All right, this has been great. Okay, th th this is really good input to me. So, um, uh, Nordstrom, NAIC, Ariba, and Ori from PureSec, I would really like to understand more on your use cases and how it's impacting you. Um, and once I have a better understanding, this would allow me to kind of socialize the proposal a bit more. The Lambda team is aware of the Cloud Events proposal. Uh, I did bring it up to them. And as a matter of fact, I'm giving a keynote tomorrow at Swamp Up, uh, and the title is The Serverless Tidal Wave. And I will be mentioning about cloud events over there and the problem domain that is trying to solve. And so I'm uh, personally, uh, I'm for supporting cloud events, but you know, on what the Lambda service team is going to do um, and how it's going to impact our customers is the biggest thing that I need to understand at this point of time. Um, so I'm willing to. Um, can I explain that uh, to the Lambda team, you know, once I have the right data, because that's the language that all the service teams at Amazon talk, and I'm happy to um, follow up on that. Would it be hey, useful to check, uh, check the post that I made on the, on the chat that's uh, taken from uh, someone uh, frustrated about the, you know, inconsistency. Would it be possible or would it be useful to uh, have an email thread about this? That way everybody can share their thoughts or do, would you prefer an offline conversation? Um, what I could do is I could fire up well, uh, each, uh, okay, I, I'm thinking out loud here. Um, That's fine. I, I, I'm thinking that each customer use case may be different and I'm not sure how much they are willing to talk about it in public. So uh, I'm okay if they want to do it. I'm, I'm totally fine. Uh, I would rather preserve their, you know, own use cases. So we are very vigilant about customers' uh, security. So that's the reason I recommended that, you know, we could go out on a private route, but then once I have the data point, then I'm willing to summarize this in a public thread, you know, on whatever could be shared publicly. Okay. okay. What if you sent a public email asking for the data you're looking for? And if people don't feel comfortable sharing it publicly, they can email back to you privately, but at least for those people who, who are comfortable sharing it publicly, at least then other people can see it and use that data for their own purposes as well to help convince others of the value. Yeah, sounds good. I can do that. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. There's an end user mailing list, right? Uh, there is for CNCF in general. I don't think we have one just for our group. Okay. Our, our mailing list is pretty, pretty uh, uh, non-active, so I don't think there's a problem with flooding it. Okay. So, Doug, should I send an email or should I send a Slack message? I would do an email because not everybody watches the Slack very closely. Gotcha. Okay, I, I, I'll shoot a message, um, hopefully today. Uh, please respond back to that message, you know, either privately or publicly. Either way is fine, you know, as you feel comfortable and as is right for you. And uh, then I would like to gather that data and then take the next steps from there. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very hey, much. Hey, hey Rune, I'll, we'll, I'll go ahead and tag um, uh, SolarWinds onto the list as well. We've and. Internal implementation of cloud events um, happening in one of our across a couple of our SaaS products, um, some of which are leveraging Lambda, and it would not only do we benefit internally as we go to have our own various services, but uh, but as a customer of uh, AWS, we would benefit as well. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I would really like to understand the benefits coming out of it. So that's the key part that I'm looking forward to. But I will shoot a mail to start that thread. Excellent. Thank you very much. And thank you guys for speaking up there. I think it's been really useful. All right, so moving on the agenda. I believe last time we talked about trying to come up with uh, modifications for our milestones. Um, I'm not quite sure of the best way to move forward here other than to say I did put forward a proposal uh, earlier today, and I know it was just put out there today, so I'm not going to ask anybody to necessarily vote on it. But I did put out some ideas for how to categorize what we want to do going forward. Hold on a sec. Hopefully, you guys did see my email from yesterday. Um, basically, I moved everything into point one that we did um, from before, 
And then point two is this stuff here. Basically what I tried to do is to group things in terms of uh, the items that I thought impacted the spec the most, meaning the most breaking, the most serious breaking changes. I tried to move up to the top and the things that were either sort of on the optional line or clarifications, I moved those a little bit down. Um, but I was wondering if people wanted to take time just to review that offline, because I don't necessarily want to do it right now. Um, but other than that, are there any suggestions people have in terms of ways to move forward to lay out our roadmap going forward? I'm open to any ideas basically at this point. No comments? So you want us to review this offline? And yeah, because yeah, yeah, I don't think it's a good use of time to everybody read it right now. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, Doug, um, yep. how long? I mean, could you give us some more time to review this? Because there are quite some items here. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I don't. I have no intention of asking for a vote or anything like that right now. I just wanted to know if there was an alternative proposal or path forward to developing the list that people would like us to consider. Or does wordsmithing on what we have here a, a sufficient way to go forward? So how about give us two weeks? And if we have like some um, some new items added, uh, we can pull a PR or we just directly. Okay. Uh, how we should do this? We should yeah. directly modify this. <clears throat> yeah. If you want to see changes in here, I'm very open to putting a, a comment on the on the PR, and I'll I'll make the changes. That's not a big deal. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. So you had mentioned two weeks there. Is it okay if we try to shoot for next week? But if people need more time, then we can go another week. I'd rather be aggressive and then slip a little rather than assume a full two weeks. Is that okay? Or do people really think they need two full weeks? I think we can do a week. Well, we can, I won't speak for everyone. Okay. And Kathy, would you, would you be okay with trying for next week? But if you need more time, then we can delay it. Um, it's okay. I prefer two weeks, you know, because um, people could be on vacation. Um, okay. I, I, I don't think it's critical for us to move forward because we're going to address PRs as they come in anyway, um, but we do. We should probably lay down on paper someplace what our plans are. So let's let's do this then. For Kathy's request, we'll um, we'll maybe briefly discuss next week, but look for a vote in two weeks. Is that okay? Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you, guys. Okay. Next up is the list of proposals for the next set of work items, or uh, parallel work streams, I should say. Now, we had a whole bunch of people add comments here, or add suggestions here. Um, what I'd like to do, if you, if you guys are okay with this, is ask people to spend just a couple minutes, and I really do mean a couple, like two or three, per item added here, just to briefly summarize it. And then we can talk about next possible steps here in terms of determining what, if anything, you want to do next. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay, not hearing any objections. Kathy, I think this first one might be yours, is that true? Yes. Okay, so can maybe there's a two or three minute summary. Oh, okay, oh, you asked me to give a summary, okay. Yeah. So, um, so there have been several presentations in the, um, in the recent uh, CNCF, um, um, the KubeCon uh, conference about the, you know, function workflow or function composition, and people give it different names. What it really means is, you know, um, the user, you know, you already needs a way to specify their service use case uh, workflow. For example, um, you know, some use case could be like um, do a, a image, you know, um, face recognition on a photo when the photo is uploaded onto the cloud storage. And then uh, another use case could be in, could involve you know multiple steps of the function uh, functions either executed in sequence or in parallel, and also you know could also you know involve you know the second function wait for another event uh, to happen and and then execute that function. Um, so so I think you know we need a standard way. Um, it, it will be use, It will be good for the user if we can have a standard way or a consistent way for the user to specify um, their uh, workflow, for example, to specify what combination of events trigger what functions, uh, how those functions are executed, and what information is passed from one function to the next function, and also um, like, you know, whether the next step function execution needs to wait for another event to happen. Um, for example, we already, um, like, a, 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 I mean, a, a, 
an issue is we discussed a correlation ID, right? Uh, I think that correlation ID is associated, is associated with a use case workflow and do need to be specified in the workflow specification. Like, you know, if that workflow involves multiple events, and then if there are multiple instances of each event, and so how we correlate, you know, those event instances together to the right um, workflow execution instance. Uh, I think um, I think that's the motivation for uh, for this um, work. I this work um, work stream. So, so Kathy, on this one, are there prerequisite work streams that would have to happen first? For example, would this require us to solve the function signature interop issue first? Uh, I don't think that's necessary because this is more about this uh, um, the workflow. Um, even without function signature, you know, it's okay. It's just one. One version, it's fine. Okay. Any questions for Kathy? Kathy, have you looked at some of the work done by um, AWS in terms of step functions and the spec and the approach around that, where, whereby they're using a state machine? You mean, can we, um, sorry, you mean, can we, uh, could, you, could you say it again? Have you, have you looked at some of the work that already exists in this area? I'm just curious. Um, there don't seem to be any links to things or work that is already existing in the area. Oh yeah, yeah. When we really start working on this, yeah, we're going to. Oh, yeah, I, I'm very well about, about you know um, AWS Stack Function or other you know like Microsoft Azure Function and also Huawei, you know Graph. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. We can we can list that links when we really start to work on this. You know, those will be our reference. From a from the perspective of the work group, do you, do people think that? Um, function workflows are more important than um, the signatures, seeing as Nordstrom are delaying the adoption of Lambda because th it's so hard to move from one cloud to another. Would it make sense to, to see which of those two items is more important? Whether you standardize yeah. a signature to allow more people to adopt functions or you worry about how you chain them? Yeah, Alex, I think that's going to be a question we're going to have to ask once we get done but quickly evaluating or, or talking about each of the items on the list is to figure out which ones should come first versus second and prioritize them. So I think that's, a, that's sort of the next question after this review. Yeah. Okay. All right, any other questions, comments for Kathy before we move on to the next one? Okay, event orchestration and chaining. Kathy, was this yours or is this somebody else? I can't remember. Uh, I think this is somebody else. Okay. Is anybody on the call? Is the owner of this one on the call? I can't remember who it was. Yeah, I, I, I wrote part of this when it was uh, still uh, combined with what Kate talked about. But this is, I can talk about it, but I'm still I'm new to the working group, so I might say a lot of wrong stuff. But there are a lot of questions about how uh, events and functions are transmitted and chained. There is, uh, at the KubeCon face-to-face, -face, there was the discussion about the uh, light bulb or an event. You, you have an event, uh, a, an actual device in a room that's uh, generating an event. Now, well, a light bulb might not know what room it's in, if it's in a warehouse or a flat. And you might have uh, event gateways forwarding that event. How is that done? Are they allowed to modify the event? Do they generate a new event? What is happening? And there are a lot of questions on this and people wanting to just before the meeting, Doug, you responded to a PR for somebody wanted to add the source attribute for IoT events to help with adoption because they do need that. It's the whole thing. Uh, we have an event that's been generated and we want to forward it, maybe add some more details to it, again, in relation to the correlation ID issue that Katie talked about. And there's a lot of questions here and it's unclear who's allowed to modify what, how events are forwarded. And uh, there's been some discussion about putting everything in headers and not necessarily having labels. Again, this is still very tied up with the correlation ID. But then again, at the face-to-face, -face, the issue of uh, encrypted or signed uh, payloads was uh, brought up. And if the payload is encrypted, obviously the uh, event gateway could not 
do that much unless there are some labels that are outside of this. This needs to be discussed because there are a lot of questions. From well, well we, we, I think we agreed that we want to go and amend the proposal that Thomas made um, to for that to be properties that are associated with the message and then we're also going to have an annotation property bag. So I, th I, I thought that was something that we had kind of semi-resolved uh, at least that there will be a proposal that we can go and then go and discuss. Yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll agree this will be part of the cloud events uh, spec. Uh, first, I think this is a very important um, thing, um, but I think we agree that this will be part of the um, cloud event spec, will not be a separate uh, item. Also, uh, talks about, I think Thomas has a, a, a source label proposal. I think Vlad also has something which put into my uh, PR, some suggestion put into my on my correlation ID PR, we can probably look at both and then see how we should, you know, um, do this. So it sounds like there may be some things that definitely fall back in scope of the spec, and, but it's not like, Vlad, you, you think there may be some items that were falling outside of scope, and I'm wondering whether what we should do is assume they're in scope right now, get people to open up PRs for those features, and then once people look at the PRs, then they can make the determination about whether it's in or out of scope, and if they're out of scope, then we can push it back to this list. What do you think? I think this is still, uh, there was the issue of, okay, we do set a bag of events or labels or whatever, and we do that in cloud events. That's in scope of cloud events. But if we do that, we don't specify, okay, there is just a bag, you put everything you want in here. I do think there, there is a need to say, okay, what are we going to put here? What's going to go uh, as a label and not uh, as a payload labeled stuff? I don't know. And again, this leaks quite a lot in the correlation ID, which is part of cloud events. But I don't see it as a good idea to just put a field and say, okay, you put anything you want in here, but we're not going to specify exactly what. But that really depends on what the semantics of your particular solution are and how you're going to use the events. So, okay, I don't want to get into a deep discussion about how to solve this particular problem, but what I think I'm hearing, though, is at least part of this may fall within scope of the spec. So, so like maybe it would be best if we discuss this within the scope of the specification until we definitely decide it's not in scope, because I don't want to leave something out if, if it does if we do think it should be there. Yeah, I think that's a good su suggestion. You know, we can do some exercise to see whether, you know, everything, you know, talk being, you know, um, talked here is, you know, within that scope or with the, the proposal or the solution solves all this. Yeah, okay I agree. That? that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, any other questions or comments on that one before we move on to the next one? Okay, function signatures. I can't remember who added this one. Uh, Yaron, was that you? Or is that somebody else? No, I, I think it was not it? I would have thought that's um, serverless framework guys have been very keen on that. Well, who, let me put it this way. Who wants to speak to this one? <laughs> Regardless of whether it's yours or not. Or is it just so blazingly obvious we're not the I same mean, thing? Any, I think any of us could really speak to this. It's This is when you like, um, like we heard from Nordstrom, you, you're thinking of adopting serverless, you start writing some code for Azure, and then you realize that it's not going to work out. You want to move it to AWS and you can't because the signatures are all different uh, and the events are different. So this is about finding a way to get common ground. The same thing applies with open source FAS as well. Every open source FAS, some of them are, are trying to follow Lambda, so there's more compatibility, but others are, are just finding their own opinions on it. All right. Any questions on that? Seems fairly straightforward. Yeah, it's that, that's going to. I think from and speaking for, from the Microsoft perspective, that going, that one is going to be a little difficult um, because that ends up being a discussion about API um, standardization, uh -huh. and I'm a little worried about that happening now because it's early, and once. You know, once a space is pretty settled, then you can say, okay, now we're tightening up the APIs. But this field is is just right now emerging, and um, 
we're, I'm worried about ending up in a situation where we are effectively limiting our own abilities and everybody's abilities to go and just do new, new things by just bolting down to a particular API shape. Right. And so let's let, hold off. This comes down to. Yeah. So let, let's hold off on the discussion uh, which one we want to yeah. do, whether you know, any bears are too soon or, or, or not. So let, let's hold off on that. So okay. it's, it's legitimate. I think yeah. um, that's true. The other, the other thing, though, is that we have this implicitly, and people already have committed to the, the Azure or the OpenFAS API. And that's a fact. It's just that there's now a problem, and there may be some projects that can find a common ground, and then moving between them would be incredibly useful as an end user. Um, I am concerned as well about uh, breaking the interface so with everybody that's got so far have people actually using this and making use of it. Now that we change the signature, how would you even manage that? So I think there's a, there's a concern, maybe a worry that needs to be locked with this as well. Right. Okay. But I think everybody understands that what we're talking about here. I don't think there's any confusion about that. So let's move on to the next one. APIs for accessing cloud events. And Euron, I think this one might be yours in conjunction with the next one. Is that true? Uh, which one? Sorry. APIs for accessing cloud events and then the cloud event client SDK. I think those might be related and I think they're both yours, aren't they? Uh, probably. Uh, <laughs> really the, the ones afterwards, the logging, etc. cetera. Uh, I think the, the SDK is something we spoke about the last time, uh, which is, uh, you know, for testing or for people that want to integrate easily with cloud events, we provide a simple and transfer that we uh, support, like HTTP, AMQP, et cetera. Um, don't think there's a lot of uh, things to it. Uh, you know, there's also the, so the consumer API, which is a little more difficult and more opinionated because it has all the, uh, the marshalling uh, aspects. But I think the push uh, API is uh, less contentious. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, let's move on to the next one now. This one's yours, right? You're on common fu function for logging, observing, and monitoring. Yeah, so, um, you know, each one of the frameworks have, or most of the frameworks have a logging facility. Like if you go to uh, Amazon, you have uh, some logging facility that uh, writes things to CloudWatch eventually. You go to Nucleo, we have something that can export to a variety of uh, logging services, and uh, so, so does Azure and others. So. Uh, when, uh, if you're starting to write the function, so you focus on the events and the signature, everything is cool, but then within your functions, you're calling a logging facility and each one of those logging facilities have its own proprietary API. That means that every, every place you put a debug print or a logging, et cetera, you have to modify your code or you have to build some wrappers. So if we come with a suggestion for a common API, uh, for logging and uh, that, you know, we can also build wrappers to the different log implementations within the different function providers and people can update uh, the semantics and uh, for the open source community, we can also uh, support that, uh, you know, all try and, and converge on one uh, definition. Uh, it's not only for the function implementation, but also uh, we, we can come with a uh, facility, especially on the open source community where you could have uh, like log consumer or logging service that consumes the uh, function uh, event. So like could be Kubernetes, okay, but it may be a direct injection of a, of a log entry into something like Elasticsearch or CloudWatch or uh, App Insights. Uh, so that, that's the proposal. There's also, we're using something from Uber called uh, Zap and I've, I've also listed how it works. So if people are interested in looking into it, but yeah, it's, it's more the point of trying to standardize the way you're doing logging. We could further expand it later to also observing maybe uh, you know, open tracing sort of API built into the function uh, context or uh, maybe some programmable counters, you know, that would be pushed to things like Prometheus. Did you, did you mention open tracing already? I know Mark, Mark's team implemented that recently and they found that it, it could take the place of logging in some circumstances. Right, still, uh, you know, I assume something like Elasticsearch or uh, App Insights or CloudWatch is not necessarily uh, designed for tracing. So uh, 
but yeah, I, I think we can design it in a way where it could be a dual purpose. I'm just, I'm wondering how that path, which is like, so for instance, in, in Azure Functions, Azure Functions logs into the Azure Monitoring Pipeline, which is used by all the other 200 services as well. And so I'm wondering how this is specific to what we're trying to achieve here with in the, in the working group. Is that special? No, I, I think it alleviates the complexity from the programmer side of trying to uh, integrate with each one of the logging facilities. You know, he, he writes the code once. I, I don't know if you're aware, but Nucleo can also publish events to Azure uh, App Insights. Uh, so it is possible for, for serverless uh, frameworks to publish to multiple, uh, you know, logging services. There's a bigger question about logging as well as like what what do you log, especially if you're working with a big payload. Um, I think people that are doing logging maybe haven't thought about that. You have a 10 megabytes binary response from a function or input. Are you, are you really going to log that? And what does GDPR say about it? Yeah. Yeah, but that's why, <laughs> but that's why you have a, an explicit, log, uh, explicit logging API in many places and not necessarily just saying, you know, everything that is standard output is being uh, logged and you may even have different severity. That's why I'm saying once we'll dive into how to define it, we may do a, a good job in defining it in a way that it solves those problems. Okay, well, I, think, I think the concept here is pretty clear. Any, any questions on the concept itself? Okay, I think the next one is yours too, Jaron. You wanna quickly talk about that one? Or did you already mention that as part of your broader discussion? Yeah, so signature is one thing, but let's assume we wanna provision a function uh, which includes creating a spec, you know, maybe some code artifacts and, and publishing into uh, a serverless uh, framework. So uh, there's no real standard around it. There are a couple of efforts, you know, SAML, which is uh, Amazon and is really very confined to an Amazon set of services. And the other one is from serverless uh, Inc, you know, uh, dot com. Uh, but that one doesn't necessarily have a common uh, you know, set of APIs across the different functions because each function is different. So if we come with a server sort of spec of this is how you would define, you know, pretty much like a pod spec or a deployment spec where you have, you know, the same deployment across different deployments, uh, you know, we can create like a function spec that may even encompass uh, other attached services like databases, message queues, API gateways, et cetera. Uh, that could ease the burden of provisioning the same function across multiple uh, providers. All right, any questions? Yeah, I, I think this is a, a interesting topic, also important topic, because from the user side, um, you know, the user does not want to, you know, uh, to construct different deployment scripts for different platforms. So we, if, if we can define some, you know, uh, um, common and deployment um, language, or not language, primitives, it will be easier for the user to, um, to be uh, portable to different uh, cloud, uh, service, uh, cloud service platform. Uh, but I think you know it's. I think you know it's not the deployment. It not uh, does not just involve function. It also involves the events. So um, maybe if we want, really want to go for to work on this, I think we should call service deployment model rather than function because it. I uh, as you are in, when you are explained, he also mentioned you know quite some event sources. Um, there's another aspect to this or another incentive for the uh, different uh, serverless providers to, to standardize on this, um, you know, helping developers shift from one platform to another without having to relearn, um, you know, how to, how to define these files. Um, so a developer that worked on one platform now wants to switch to another platform that will make the, you know, the uh, learning curve much uh, shorter. Yeah. I think given where we are in terms of development um, and, and, you know, velocity of the space, it'll probably be more successful to have a framework that kind of sits inside of those platform and makes them, makes them even and then is quick to adapt rather than trying to, um, 
uh, it'll make all the cloud providers uh, follow a common standard, which then would have to go and be adapted. Um, I, I think I understand the motivation behind the behind this one, the common function model, also the common mo logging model. I just found it, I found it pretty hard to, um, you know, go into product development with with a committee spec effectively, and then be constrained by it. So, so I think for uh, if the like the product does not want to make changes, I think you know, we, you know, we can do a mapping like to develop. I mean, for each company, can develop a a mapping or adapter. I mean, well, layer. I've seen this in this. this what well, this is basically the premise of um, what Austin is doing with his work with Serverless Inc. is to to be that common. Um, it's YAML. I think it's a YAML file at the moment. And he, you know, he explained to me how many problems there have been because every provider is just so different with all the resources you have to set up. And they are really focused on only doing serverless functions. Is there anyone from his, from his team here? I don't think we have anybody on the team here today, no. Um, this would basically be re reinventing what they're, what they're doing. Yeah. Um, I th yeah, I think this is a very, very challenging this and the function signature, probably two of the harder ones. Yeah. The, the hard reality of this, of like, you can standardize some pieces. And I think we can even find, like on the, on the top level uh, function signature piece, for instance, that, like there's this, I looked at the proposal, there's all the different, the different signatures. You can probably find a way to make it all look very much the same in Node. But then, then you you click you click once and look at the next level, and that again is different, because all, the underlying infrastructure and all the configuration stuff and all this is, in a way, platform dependent, um, and and it's also constrained by by rules that the platform makes, and that's not, for instance, in, in Azure the functions team teams to decide, right? Their, their management API has a certain shape because that's the same thing across the hundreds of Azure services. So it's not that they're at liberty to go and break out of that. Right, so so, let them, so the, let, let's, let's, let's move on though, because I don't want to dive too deep into each one of these yet. I think everybody understands what the, what the proposal here is at a high level. Um, but we have one more to go through. Then we can talk about next steps and how we're going to resolve what to work on and talk about that process. So Iran, you want to talk about the last one? I think that one's yours as well. Yeah, uh, you know, the last one is just talking about benchmarking and the need for uh, some common one, just like there is specvert or in the sort of NoSQL space, YCSB or or anyone else. So something that uh, instead of each one inventing his own benchmark, we come to some consensus how we benchmark the efficiency of uh, serverless. All right. Any questions on that one? I think there needs to be some parameters around that. Um, when you benchmark something on on the cloud, I mean, compare that to an open source fans. There's a very big difference. But perhaps at least the common ground should be that they are all running on Kubernetes, or they all have the same um, API. I saw some of the the benchmarks there from the link, and they they weren't done with Kubernetes. It was done with a raw Docker socket, I believe, on localhost. Now these tests really need to be representative of how a user will access functions. So they should pass through an ELB. They should be checked for authentication so that it's a real world comparison, not just a number that makes one project look good because it takes shortcuts. Agreed. Uh, and if you look at how Specvert, for example, uh, works, it's, it's not even those, it's even from a sense of uh, an ROI. Okay, so it's like for a given cost, what do you get? So it does allow you to normalize also the cloud provider solutions. So there are different ways. I'm not saying that we know the answer. I'm just saying, let's sit together and define how we measure it. So uh, customers can say, okay, this is more expensive or less ex expensive or faster or slower for an individual use case, because maybe one framework will be good at one thing and the other one will be good at a different thing. All right, any other questions or comments on that? Okay, so in terms of next steps, I was trying to think of ways to move forward here, and I can, off the top of my head, I can think of three different options going forward. One is we can have an offline meeting for people who are interested in trying to come back with a proposal for the one or more things that we want to work on next, if we want to do more than one in parallel. 
Two, I could put up some kind of voting mechanism someplace where people just vote from this list and we see which one wins or which ones get the highest votes. Or, and these aren't necessarily mutually exclusive, but the third one I could think of is have people send a note to the mailing list expressing their opinions on why we should either avoid one or why we should focus on one over the others first. Are there other ideas or any of those you guys have preferences for or on how to move forward on trying to decide what to work on next? Yeah, you, you, I mean, logistically, you could create a GitHub issue, put a comment for each, and people can use the, the thumbs up buttons. That's true that too. That might work. That works. Are people ready to, I guess you could also then have a conversation within that issue too, so you don't have to worry about the mail list thing. So what about that idea? I, I like that one. What if we open up an issue for each one of these and then people can vote and comment on the issue and have a little back and forth. And we'll, when things seem to die down, then we can look at it and say, okay, time to resolve the, the voting. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay, any other suggestions? Okay. Okay, in that case, are there any other uh, things that people want to bring up relative to this, um, relative to this whole idea of picking out the next work stream to work on? Kind, kind of relative to that, relative to the 0.1 work stream and the demo that was shown at KubeCon. Um, is anybody able to say which event sources have implemented cloud events to some extent? I know that um, Event Grid from Azure has, and we've used that. Um, I heard that AWS had, but I, I couldn't find any um, anything about that online. Anybody have anything on that one? I believe the AWS one was just transited through uh, the serverless.com uh, event gateway. So it was just the regular um, webhook subscription and then they transformed it? Right. Okay, so is, is, that, is that the the current state of play event grid for object storage only? Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, okay. I just want to know, um, have a talk no, with no, Docker no, London next week and I'd like Clemens, to be able to talk about it. Clemens, I, th I thought that you had uh, cloud events across all of event grid now. Uh, we do, yes. For every event source that event grid supports. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's a gen it's, we have a generic, we have a generic um, um, ma remapper. Okay. Effectively. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your help. Anyway, Clement, on um, on Twitter, we we managed to get uh, your event working with OpenFAS without changing anything, which was neat. That makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> as, as, yeah. We still need to get the uh, the you know, webhook specification done so we can go and uh, finalize all of that. So um, John McCabe, that actually did the work for that. He said that there was a there was a bug that the content type wasn't being set correctly for the subscription. But I mean, we can take that offline. Yeah, I was gonna say let's take that discussion offline if we can. Yep. Okay, cool. In that case, with <clears throat> a whopping ten minutes left, I'm not sure we have time to dive too deep into a really meaty PR. Um, and I think most of them actually do involve a fair amount of discussion, except for the first one, which I think is strictly syntactical. And it's the idea of moving the data out from under the context attributes into a, another section. So it's presented as a sibling to all the other attributes, um, which are metadata about the event itself. I was wondering if people had a chance to look at this one and what people thought of it. Because I haven't really seen any comments on it about whether it's good or bad or and I'm hoping that, well, outside from Kathy, I'm wondering if you all feel comfortable accepting this one or do you need more time? It is I, only saw, I, I saw the headline and found it good, but... Uh... <laughs> Um, sorry, I didn't comment on it, but it's good good for me. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Do people want more time or can we accept it and then tweak it later as necessary with additional PRs? I can go either way. Okay. Not hearing anything. I, oh, go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. Was that Rachel? Oh, yeah. I just think this looks good. Okay. You can interpret um, like silence okay. and silence. I'd, I'd like to, but I don't want to rush it. Okay, so let me ask the question then. Is there any objection to adopting this PR? All right, cool. Um, are there any other PRs people can think of on this list that are relatively small? Otherwise, I'd like to 
defer the media discussions for later when we have more time because I think I only have like eight minutes left. I don't think there's anything small, unfortunately. Okay, not hearing anything. So before I go back and do the final roll call, is there any other business people would like to bring up? Any other topic that's relatively light? I would like to have more eyes on the HTTP webhook specification, especially because I made it made a beefy change this week. So uh, further reviews would be welcome. And then it's something that I would like to, um, uh, uh, sorry, get into the repo soon. Okay. Yeah, are, are you all done with edits? Is it, is it really, I addressed all the comments in there? I, yes, I did all the, I, I addressed all the edits and now I added, uh, based on the comments, a um, um, basic callback mechanism so that you can, uh, if you get a, if for, for the validation step. So if you get a call, you can actually go and fish the URL from the log and then call the URL manually and with that unblock the, the sender. Uh, rather than the, than forcing the uh, client to implement a particular protocol. All on, right, cool. On that note, Clemens, it, I just opened your um, spec, and the first, well, the second paragraph says that HTTP POST must use a token auth NZ. What does that mean? Does that mean that um, webhooks can have to have authentication with a token? Um, Every single cloud event would have to 100% do this. Uh, make a comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's it's literally the second paragraph. It's... Yeah, I I, I have, I'm a strong believer in authentication, um, but let's yeah let's let's discuss it. And I'm, let me just pull this up. So I mean, oh, hang on. There's, oh. there's quite a lot of um, GitHub. So integrations of things like GitHub and the way they do that is is not through an auth header. Um, they use something like HMAC, a symmetric key. That's quite widely adopted as well. Um, are you sure you want to push people too far down one? Oh, I, I, to for, for me, token is not a, a particular thing. It's a, it's in it's so it can just be as well be a key. So, but I'm not. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, see, so what line number? Yeah, what line number do I go to? So I clicked on the line for HTTP webhook specifications. This is the GitHub issue. Mm -hmm. So you're not on the Git. You're not on the GitHub issue. You want something else? Oh, the, oh, I'm, I'm looking at the PR. Is that the yeah, right? Yeah, look at the conversation tab. Ah, oh, sorry. Because I'd rather look at the at the specific changes if. Because that's usually no, there's a, less, and less it says uh, specification defines notifications are delivered by post. Yeah, of course. Must use token or NZ scheme. Um, so integrations like GitHub that are very popular, you're not, very you're, widely used. You're, you're, not, you're not looking at the actual at the actual PR, are you? I just clicked on the link in the white group. We we've got it open on the screen now. If you can see it. Okay. He's talking uh, about yeah, the no, no, that's that's no, no this. Um, uh, look at the actual document. That's what counts, not my comments. The, the, the spec says the client may use a token-based authentication yes. scheme. Well, the PR comment, which is the yeah. like summary, says it must. I, so I just... I, I, yeah, I care, I care more about what's in PR. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Care, about, I care about both because the first is the intent of the person that wrote it and the second is what will go in. Well, I actually... I, 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 um, uh, this is the normative text, and the normative text has changed quite a bit since I posted that comment, and I don't update that comment. So look at the look at the text. Yeah, I will take a look at the text. And not at the oh, PR. I can go and clean out the PR comments. Thanks. Okay. Anyway, good. We have clarity. Obviously, yeah. Okay. Anything else, high level, before I go back and do final roll call? Rachel, did you have a comment? Um, I just wanted to make sure that we're going to go back and update the comment because when people yeah, yeah, get that, they Okay, yep, Clemens will go do that. Thank you. All right, with that, let me just go back and do final roll call. Um, Ginger C Collison? Yeah, Sean's, I'm here. Yep, got here. it. Thank you. All right, Sean Smith? Yep. Fraud? Fraud? Orit? Orit, you still there? Or no, or, 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 or. I'm here. Okay. Uh, Adit? Or Edith? I'm here. Okay. I apologize for butchering your name. Ihor? 
No worries. <laughs> Ihor, are you still there? I'm here. Excellent. Uh, Steve-O. I'm here as well. All right, Aaron. He's here with me. <clears throat> All right, Joe Sherman. Yes, I'm Joe? here. Excellent, yes. and Rob Dolan. I was late, but I'm here now. Excellent, Rob, and back to fraud. All right, is there anybody on the call that is not on the agenda or on the attendee list that I missed? Yes, hey, this is uh, Sven Lobert. Sven, okay, got it, thank you. Anybody else? All right, with that, I believe we're done. Thank you guys very much. I'll talk again next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.